Every group has fixed roles. You have the funny one, the shy one, the serious one, and then you have the one who spoils all plans. The spoil sport in the group of 20 or G20 is China. Reports say Beijing has a problem with India's motto for the G20. This one, Vasudev Kutumbakam. It is a Sanskrit phrase derived from the Upanishads. It means the world is one family. Now you would think it's a non-controversial one. Why wouldn't someone like this? Why wouldn't you like the world to be one family? Well, China doesn't. Reports say they have objected to including it in all outcome documents, like the one released after the finance minister's meet, or after the energy minister's meeting, or the tourism minister's meeting, all of them. These documents do not mention Vasudev Kutumbakam. They only mention an English version of it. One earth, one family, one future. There is one exception, though. The foreign minister's meeting document does mention the Sanskrit phrase, and who knows? Maybe that's why Chingang lost his job. But jokes aside, what is China's objection? Beijing says Sanskrit is not an official language of the United Nations. The UN has six official languages, Arabic, Chinese, English, French, Spanish, and Russian. No Indian language is part of it. So China says you can't put Sanskrit on official texts. Letterheads are fine, the G20 website is fine, but on meeting documents, a strict no. What about the other members? Do they also have an objection? Reports say most of them sided with India, and why not? This is argument for argument's sake. Vasudev Kutumbakam is among the oldest philosophies in India. The world needs a dose of it right now. We are fighting wars with other countries, with nature, even with ourselves. So the idea that Earth should be one family is positive. Instead of encouraging it, China is shooting it down. Not surprising, though. China has repeatedly tried to derail India's G20 presidency. In the month of May this year, a G20 meeting was held in Jammu and Kashmir. China skipped it. Before that, in the month of March, there was a meeting in Arunachal Pradesh. Again, China skipped it. What reasons did they give? On Kashmir, they said the territory is disputed. As for Arunachal, they claim the state is their own. But this time, the Chinese have outdone themselves. They have objected over language. It's as petty as it gets. So what exactly are they playing at? We can think of two possibilities. Number one, an attempt to tarnish India's image. This is India's first ever time presiding over the G20. New Delhi has been promoting it a lot. Plus, this year has been diplomatically very important for India. Some big visits to the US and France, some crucial balancing acts between Russia and the West, and also the presidency of the SCO, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. India was the president this year. The G20 is supposed to be the crowning moment, the culmination of everything India has achieved this year. So a successful summit is key for New Delhi. India's image as a bridging power is at stake, and China knows this. If the leaders are unable to agree on a joint statement, it's an embarrassment for India. Possibility number two, a tit-for-tat move. India has been quietly resisting China's efforts to expand the SCO and BRICS. China wants to turn them into anti-Western blocs. India is unwilling to do that. So could this be retribution? You hurt us in BRICS, we hurt you in the G20. If that is the case, it is petty. This year's G20 was supposed to be about the global south, about issues like climate change and sustainable growth. China is risking all of that for petty politics. And these minor objections could be setting the stage for a bigger one. Xi Jinping skipping the G20 meeting. It's scheduled for September this year, next month. So far, Xi Jinping's travel to India has not been announced. And like it or not, you can't discuss the global south without China. It is home to more than 1.4 billion people. It is the second largest economy in the world. So China's presence is important. They could have used their influence positively to shape the talks. Instead, they're holding the G20 hostage over two Sanskrit words.